Can we all stand up as we are about to welcome our Apostle, the head of the whole of Netherlands. Come on, give it up, give it up, Apostle. Give it up. He, he did not even come alone. He came with his wife, our beautiful mother. Have a patience of being a shoe. Give it up for her as well. Amen. good to be in the presence of God. We want to bless God and thank him so much for what he is doing. It's good to see you uh, and also to uh, see all the activities that the Lord is doing through you. Uh, today we came to encourage you to continue to do more for the Lord. You see, the reason why the Lord has called us, he has shown his love to us. As we've been discussing for the past month, looking at the love of God, the Lord wants us to extend this love that he has shown to us, to others. So many people are suffering and they don't know what to do. But we are the church. We've been called out of darkness. We've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is in us. And because of that, we have every cause to do more. But Jesus believed in his disciples. And before he ascended, this is what he told them in John chapter 14 verses 12 to 17. Because we don't come often, uh, maybe I will not follow what is going on, but I came to encourage you to do more for the Lord. Oh, the army is weak. Amen. So, once the Holy Spirit is with us, we can do more. So Jesus said this in John 14, 12 to 17. Can I read, Apostle? Yeah, you may read. I read from the NLT version, John chapter 14, verse 12 mm. to 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, mm. he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Mm. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that he, the Father, may be glorified in the Son. 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Up to 17. Oh, sorry. 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, mm. and I will pray the Father, and he will, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. 17. The spirit of the truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. Aspiring for greater works is what I'm talking about. Aspiring for greater works. Church, if we look at what is going on around the world, there is the need for the church to arise. You see, if we don't, the world will rather come to the church. We are special people. We've been chosen. We've been called. We've been forgiven. We've been cleansed. And Jesus is hoping in us. He has the hope that we can do more. When he called the disciples, while he was here on earth, they followed him. They watched him carefully. They, they saw how compassionate he was. He cared for the poor. He cared for the brokenhearted. But he knew he would not stay with them forever because he had a mission. And his mission was to die for the whole world. So, if you take time to read through 
the Gospels, especially John, you, you know that. The key word in the Gospel of John is belief. The writer of the Gospel 98 times wrote, we must believe. Believe what? We must believe in Jesus. We must believe in his finished work because he came to die for mankind. And once we have him, we have peace with God. God so loved the world. That is why he gave his only begotten son. In John, Jesus is introduced as the son of God. The writer didn't take time to talk about uh, when he was a baby, but he said in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Jesus told the disciples that truly if you believe in me, the work that I do, what was the work that he was doing? He was preaching to the poor. He was healing the sick. He was showing the way to God. And if you believe in me, this work that I do, you will do them also. For Jesus to say truly, truly, you see, God cannot lie. So normally when Jesus is saying something, uh, he will not repeat it. But for him to repeat, truly, truly, I say to you, if you believe in me, the work that I do, you will do them also. He meant what he was saying. He knew that after he has gone to the Father, he will ask that the promised Holy Spirit will come and dwell with us. And once the Spirit has come, we will be able to do more than he did. Church, still the Holy Spirit is here. But are we doing more? Are we doing more? Are we doing more? So, greater things it is the desire of Jesus' followers to do what he did. And these greater things include the work of converting people to Christ and performing miracles. You see, when the Holy Spirit had not come upon the disciples, some of them who were following Jesus had fear in their hearts. Peter, for instance, could deny Jesus because he had not experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. But when we go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come unto you and you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea and to the ends of the world. And truly, on the day of Pentecost when they received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Peter could stand and preach and in a single sermon, 3,000 souls were saved. These are the greater works Jesus was talking about. Hallelujah. If we believe in him, greater things can we also do. Yes. You see, God is not respecter of persons. If you avail yourself if I avail myself, God can use each and every one of us to win as many souls as he wants to bring them into his kingdom. We have the world. If we say we have to possess the world, all that we are saying is that it should not be a slogan, but our very lifestyle should influence the people we encounter daily. Jesus expects us that once the Holy Spirit is in us, once we have become a new creation, once we, we swim in his love, once we, we, we believe that he will come again, we have something that we have to do. So, church, I came to remind you that we have to do greater works for him. I was so happy when I saw the way you were singing at the central station. And I said, God, bless this wonderful young 
men and women. Because you shouldn't become ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says this is the power of God unto salvation. Everywhere we go, we must demonstrate to the world that Jesus is with us and we are not ashamed. He says that if we believe in him, how many of us believe in Jesus? Oh, how many of us believe in Jesus? You can lift up your hands so that Jesus will see you. How many of us? And if you believe in him, the work that he did, you can do also. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. Signs and wonders will follow us if we believe. Because Jesus said, when I go to the Father, I will send another counselor. You see? So, the coming of the Holy Spirit is a sure proof that indeed Jesus died, he arose, and he has ascended to heaven. Because he said, once I go to the Father, I will ask him to bring the Holy Spirit. And Jesus called the Holy Spirit in John 14, 16, another counselor. If we translate that in Greek, parakletos, meaning someone who is called alongside to help. Someone who is called alongside to help. This is a rich word. It's a rich word. And it means someone who is comforter, someone who strengthens us, someone who is our helper, someone who is our advisor, someone who is our advocate. So the coming of the Holy Spirit gives the believer the boldness to do more. 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 For Christ. This is our mandate. Jesus is expecting us. Spread the gospel. You see, yours is to preach. Yours is to tell people about the love of God. When you tell them about the love of God, it is the Holy Spirit who will help to convict that person. But if we fail to tell people about the love of God, then we are not trying to do greater works for him. So, because of the Holy Spirit, we must preach. We must not be ashamed. We must show good character because God has thrown us, he has scattered us abroad at your workplace, at your school, in your homes. People must know that Christ is in you. And you can show his love. You must have that compassion for dying souls. You must have that compassion for those who have not heard the gospel. You must have that compassion for those who are broken hearted and tell them about the love of God. Some people are trying, because of what we are going through globally, so many people even want to take their lives. But when you tell them about the love of God, that you know of a man, his name is Jesus. He came to die for all. His love never ceases. His love is renewed every morning. When you tell them about the love of God, they will come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greater works will you do because I have gone to the Father. And indeed, the disciples, after Jesus left, when you read the accounts in the book of Acts, you realize that they did not take this lightly. The great commission was upon all of them. They preached, and the Bible says they turned their world around. Every sphere of their community was influenced by the gospel because the Holy Spirit has come to indwell them. 
This is our time. Church, tomorrow may be too late, but today as we have life, we must keep on. We must aspire to do greater things for the Lord. And God is a rewarder. And he sees what we are doing here. And he, he will reward us here and also reward us in heaven. All that we have to do is to show the love of God. You see, whoever shares the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is sharing God's love to the world. It is not enough just to share bread, but let us share the word. Care for the lost. Preach. Pray. And let us also live our lives as we know who has called us. We shouldn't just behave As people who don't know what Christ has done for us, for him to save us, for him to die on the cross, we have become a new creation. And our lifestyle must also influence those who are around us. It should serve as a testimony. It's good to shout. But sometimes people can hear us when we shout. But when we are determined to live the righteous way, people will see. And our lifestyle, our very lifestyle will become a testimony. Greater works will we do with God in, in spite of the challenges that we are going through because the Holy Spirit is with us, we can do it. Oh, the amen is weak. When it Greater works will you do because I've gone to the Father. For us to do greater works, one, we must stay connected to the source of the power. If you disconnect yourself from the source, we can't function. Jesus is full of power. And he is still alive. Amen. And he is our source of strength. He is our source of power. Yeah. He is our source of blessing. Amen. And each one of us must stay connected to our very source, who is Jesus. And because his life flows through us, when we stay connected, we can do more. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We must rely on the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. Jesus said the world cannot know him because they don't. But you know him. Once you receive Jesus as your personal savior, he comes to indwell in your heart. And because the Holy Spirit is in you, we can swim in this great anointing. And the love of God has been deposited in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is why when we see people who don't know Jesus, or when we see those who are in need, the love of God can push you to do something for them. Let us rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't let us do things on our own way. But in all things we must acknowledge him who has deposited the love of God in our hearts. It is through the Holy Spirit that we can show to this world that we are the children of God. Church, let us aspire to do greater things for the Lord. Once we preach the gospel, the Bible says that signs and wonders will follow us. We will not be running after signs. But the power of the gospel will cause signs to follow us. So even as you go to the cities, to your neighborhood to preach, 
those who are sick, pray for them. And God will back the prayers because we are doing his will. He is still in the business of doing miracles. And because the Holy Spirit has come and he came with giftings, there are some of us here, you are loaded. You have become a reservoir of God's divine power. And as we share the good news, I pray that one day God will raise some of you that we will hear a testimony that a blind eye has been opened. Yes, because someone prayed for. A cripple is walking because God's still in the business of doing miracles. Just as he was yesterday, he is today and forever he will be the same. Greater things will you do because I've gone to the Father. You see, when Jesus was physically with the disciples, he did so many miracles. But we did not read or find in scripture where his shadow could heal the sick. But after the Holy Spirit came and the disciples believed greater things they did. The shadows could heal the sick. If you believe in me, the things that I do, you will do them also. This is the promise of Jesus. So church, let us keep keeping on. Let us keep believing that the Lord is with us. Let us know that the Holy Spirit is residing in us. Let us trust that God will back our words with signs and wonders as we try to possess the nations for him. We are doing his will. And the promised Holy Spirit because he will remain with us forever. We will be able to transform this nation. Many are dying. Many have lost hope. Let, let us tell them about the love of Jesus. There is this prophet in the Bible that I love so much. His name is Elisha. When you read 2 Kings chapter 2, you, you know that he was so determined to get hold of the mantle of his master, Elijah. When he knew in his spirit that the time has come for his master to depart, God was preparing to take his master away. He was following him. And the master persuaded him in every way to stop following him. But Elisha said, no. I will go with you. He troubled him until Elijah asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And then this man said, oh, I want that anointing upon your life. I want a double portion. I will not settle for the same, but I want double. And Elijah said, no, this is a difficult question. But when you see that the chariot of heaven has come to take me, your request will be granted. And Elisha was determined, he followed Elijah until he saw the chariot coming from heaven and taking him. He cried and he received his mantle. And when he received the mantle, if you read his accounts, he doubled the miracles that Elijah did. But we have received a greater mantle than that of Elisha. Because the Holy Spirit has come from heaven and it is dwelling with us forever. Church, may we arise. May we arise. May we arise. Go out there. Tell the world about the love of Jesus. That Jesus still loves you. He still loves those who are dying. There is a hope for the hopeless. 
There is healing for those who are sick. Don't get worried. Trust in Jesus and his love that he has poured in our hearts will be seen. Let's keep doing what we are doing and do more for him. And at the end, he will tell you and I, well done, thou faithful servant. Church, shall we be upstanding and begin to pray? Because the Holy Spirit is with us. He will empower you. Sign follow service in the Holy Ghost. Then the church of Jesus will cry and say the Lord is with us.